assignment 47 or this tutorial gonna allow us to rediscover Newton's law. So we're gonna call momentum, we're gonna rediscover Newton's second law, we're gonna call it impulse, and we're gonna rediscover Newton's third law, we're gonna call it collision. So let's uh let's make those connections. Let's start with Newton's first law. What do you know about Newton's first law? Newton's first law, we're gonna divide it in uh, two part. First part we're gonna say object, object in motion with constant velocity uh, likes to stay in motion with constant velocity in a straight line. Um, and be resisting acceleration due to um, due to net force to maintain constant acceleration. constant velocity okay all right so this one we can call inertia this one we can call momentum inertia depend on mass momentum depend on mass and velocity if mass go up Uh, then inertia will go up. If uh, mass is small, velocity is small, then momentum is small. If mass is big, then uh, momentum is big, uh, even the velocity is small. If velocity is big, momentum is big, even though mass is small. If mass is big, velocity is big, momentum is very big. Momentum as a unit, uh, mass has, as a unit is kilogram, velocity as a unit is meter per second. Therefore, momentum as a unit is meter per second is squared. Now, kilogram meter per second is squared. Kilogram meter per second. Kilogram meter per second. Uh, momentum is a vector quantity, so the direction is important. It's a vector quantity. Okay, uh, let's give you an example. Let's see how momentum works. An object at location A and location B. At location A, Object is, let's say, a car with uh, 1,000 kilogram. The mass never changes, so we're going to call this car still 1,000 kilogram. This is car mass. Uh, velocity, we're going to call this one, I don't know, velocity one is 10 meter, uh, 2 meter, um, let's say 20 meter per second. Velocity 2 has to be 20 meter per second. It cannot be anything because what we know about Newton's first law is a net force is zero. Sum of all the forces is zero. Sum of all the forces is zero or net force is zero. That's Newton's first law. Or, or acceleration is zero. Because if net force is zero, acceleration is zero. Change in velocity is zero. Okay, velocity final is 20, velocity initial is 20. So change in velocity is zero. Change in momentum is also zero. How? Okay, what is momentum initial? One, two, three. 20,000 kilogram meter per second. What is momentum final? 20,000 kilogram meter per second. 
So change in momentum is also zero. So what is Newton Fasta? Newton Fasta is all the forces, sum of all the forces is zero. Our net force is zero. Why is that? Uh, because change in momentum is zero. Okay. What, what does that mean? Uh, it's because change in velocity is zero. It's because acceleration is zero. Right? Okay. So that's Newton's first law. Now let's discover Newton's second law. So change in, uh, change in momentum as you know, delta P is equal to P final minus P initial. This is zero. So we just proved that. So let's discover, rediscover Newton's second law. You already know Newton's second law, but let's rediscover it. What do you know about Newton's second law? Newton's second law. Okay. So F equal to ma, all right. Uh, what also you know Newton first law is momentum. What is momentum? Is equal to mb. That's what you discovered. Newton first law. So Newton first law is everything you see in the table. Okay. You're gonna update table. Uh, the second box and third box in a few seconds. Uh, F is equal to MA. That's how you can uh, start the conversation. Uh, although Newton himself did not, never, did not write it this way. 1685, when he published his Principia, he wrote it differently. By the way, uh, displacement versus time, uh, velocity versus time, uh, what do you call this red line? Velocity, what do you call this red line? Acceleration. What does acceleration mean? Delta V over delta T. So you can replace then acceleration by delta V over delta T. Okay, I just replace it. Now you can do even better. M delta V over delta T. Replace this one by what? Yes, but be careful. You just don't want to write p of, okay? Because if you write p, then that would be wrong. Because force is impulse over time. Change in impulse over time. That's what the force is. Okay. So what is What is then delta p? Delta p. Okay, we're gonna. Box it and we're going to update it. What is Newton's second law? Newton's second law is F equal ma. Newton's second law also as F equal to delta P over delta T. That's Newton's second law. What else also Newton's second law? F net times delta T. What is this? Impulse. Okay. So what is the SA unit for F? Newton. What is the SA unit for T? Second. What is the SA unit for this? Uh, kilogram meter per second okay so this is impulse so we're gonna write make sure we know that the this is closely related to what change in momentum this is f delta t okay a change in momentum has a name impulse this is f delta t okay so we updated table two and we separated it from table one. Okay, so now let's see if we can give you an example of uh, impulse. Uh, let's do the same example, a car example. Uh, mass of the car is 1,000 kilogram. Mass never changed. With this small uh, velocity, uh, mass will never change. 20 meter per second, let's say 30 meter per second. Uh, so what do you see over here? This is not an example of Newton first law. This is an example of Newton's second law. How did the velocity changes? Because net force is now zero. 
So there was an acceleration involved with this problem. Okay. So acceleration causes this what? Acceleration causes this change in velocity. Net force causes the acceleration. So then what happened? There is a change in momentum. And which is not zero, which is something else. Uh, so as we said, the mass never changes. Never. Never. Rest mass. Rest mass never changes. Even if you move with speed of light. Even if you move with the speed of light, rest mass never changes. Uh, uh, what happened is uh, if you move with 3.10 raised to 8 meter per second, uh, the apparent mass changes. Apparent mass changes, not the rest mass. Okay, so we are talking about rest mass. Rest mass never changes. Okay, good. And with this velocity, apparent mass doesn't change, never change. Okay, so what is momentum initial? Momentum initial is 20,000 kilogram meter per second. What is momentum final? 30,000 kilogram meter per second. Uh, so what is then uh, change in momentum? Momentum final minus momentum initial. Momentum final, 30,000 uh, kilogram meter per second minus 20,000 kilogram meter per second. So it's 10,000 kilogram meter per second. All right. So what does that mean? That means uh, there is a change in momentum. In this case, the change in momentum was zero. In this case, the change in momentum is never zero. I'm going to write side note. Change in momentum never zero. Okay, and that's what makes it impulse. So Newton's first law has a name, uh, momentum and inertia. Newton's second law has a name, impulse. Now let's look at Newton's third law. When we talk about Newton's third law, what we actually talk about Newton's third law. Okay, Newton's third law, force on A by B is equal to force on B by A, which is equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Uh, Newton's third law has a name, uh, not force pair, uh, but a collision. Okay. How many body does it take to make this happen? Two body. One is A, one is B. That's it. Now, let's consider two body. Uh, let's say there is a gun and there is a bullet. So we're going to have a mass. We're going to say mass of the gun is uh, let's say mass one, which is five kilogram. This is just an example. A mass of the bullet, which we call mass two, let's say 0 0.002 kilogram. This is uh, when both of the things at rest. However, this is before, we're going to call this is before. After this is bullet and this is gun. Gun uh, bullet is outside the gun. Okay, so mass never changes as we said. Mass never changes. Even uh, oh, by the way, velocity of the gun is zero. Velocity of the bullet is. At rest, velocity of the bullet is also zero. Mass one, mass two, or mass two, we use the different color velocity too, okay. Uh, let's say mass one, velocity one, we're gonna find out. Mass two, 
what are you gonna call uh, 0.002 kilogram velocity to 700 uh, 800 let's say 800 meter per second okay so now we're gonna say that Newton's second third law looks different for this is equal to m1 we're going to say momentum before is equal to momentum after momentum before to how many body two body gun and bullet so m1 v1 plus m2 v2 or you can say m gun v bullet plus m gun a m gun v gun is plus m bullet v bullet this is before you can say m1 v1 plus m2 v2 however before and after you have to write prime but mass never changes even after the collision so you don't have to put prime on the mass or you can call mass gun velocity gun prime plus mass bullet velocity bullet prime uh, before uh, the gun is at rest, bullet is at rest, so zero. The gun, after the mass of the gun is how much? Uh, five. Velocity of the gun, that's what we are trying to find. Mass of the bullet is 0 0.002. Um, velocity of the bullet, I'm sorry, uh, mass of the gun, yeah, 0 0.002. Velocity of the bullet is 800. Okay, so now velocity of the gun is equal to 1.6 divided by 5, I believe. Yeah, 0 0.36, I believe, per second. All right, so so what happened over here this one moves at 80 800 meter per second however this gun is moves with how much 0 0.36 meter per second so what is the newton second law, uh, third law connection is uh, the force over here acting is this force is ab negative ab so we're gonna, not going to call we're going to call uh, this force uh um, well let's let's put the force over here force on gun by bullet is equal to force on bullet by gun equal in magnitude opposite interaction okay so yeah that's oh let's update it you don't have long what is it f a b is equal to negative FBA you already know that uh, but uh, another way of saying the same thing m1 v1 plus m2 v2 is equal to m1 v1 prime plus m2 v2 prime now Newton first law you call it inertial momentum or momentum Newton second law you call it impulse Newton third law, it doesn't work. You call it collision. Uh, so in this tutorial, we show the connection between Newton first law, momentum initiative, Newton second law, impulse, and Newton third law, collision. I'll see you tomorrow, and this is going to be in the quiz.